Okay. So, from gender, we are moving on to other kinds of diversity issues. Basically, by diversity, what we mean is there are differences, and India is one of the most diverse countries in the world. Okay, in terms of language and religion and region, ethnicity and so on. But difference can also mean inequality between people who are different, intolerance of those who are different from us. Okay? So, as I mentioned in the beginning, diversity is seen as a strength. The more diverse a workplace is, the more backgrounds people come from and the more ideas can emerge which contributes to efficiency, innovation and all of those kind of things. And these days, because many of us, especially people with higher education, work in globalized workplaces, you are interacting with people from many different countries also. So many countries, I have a very long list which I haven't shown here of companies in India and abroad, actually give you some of these kind of training when you join as an organization. So it's very important that these are included. In fact, in placement interviews also, some of these companies actually test you to find out whether you are tolerant to this diversity or you are intolerant. And like in the case of gender, there are certain kinds of words that have come into usage, which we thought is okay to use, but these days they are considered to be insensitive. For example, even dictionaries now give you a list of these terms, which once upon a time were regarded as acceptable. So this is just an example of how CEOs of some large companies are talking about how diversity is very good and therefore communication should recognize this diversity and not use terms which can be insulting or hurtful unconsciously. How can it happen? We will look at that. More than gender, in the case of race or ethnicity, skin color, national origin and so on, the acceptable words keep changing over a period of time. So that makes the, our job much more, much more difficult. So a term like black to refer to people of African American origin was used some time back. It's now considered to be more appropriate to use African American or Afro American. A term like Negro is actually a criminal criminalized now. If you use the word Negro in US, you can be jailed. Okay? They are considered to be highly insulting. So you have it's our responsibility to find out acceptable terms and use them so that we unconsciously don't make mistakes and offend others workplace both in written and oral communication as well as in the use of pictures most of you will have seen those benetton benetton ad advertisements which show people from different parts of the world that's the kind of goal we should aim for to show people from different backgrounds so so just a few examples where certain kinds of terms used to be used quite a lot, but now we avoid them. Generally, adding the word people after a term indicates respect for them. If you just uh, make a word into a plural by adding the S, that's considered to be disrespectful. Whereas if you say original people, indigenous people, tribal people, that's considered as giving respect to people of a certain cultural background. <coughs> like in the case of gender, we should not draw attention to their background unless it is necessary. You know, these are some examples. So Bengalis are intellectual, rest of us are not. Okay. Uh, likewise, entrepreneurs can come from any community. These are examples of people who are minorities who have historically been marginalized. So if you are referring to a particular person as brilliant, it is again a backhanded kind of compliment that rest of the people are still backward, this person is brilliant. So, avoid mentioning their cultural background unless you are specifically interested, otherwise do not bring it in. In India, this is the term that is currently used by the people themselves. Gandhi used the term hygien, then there was this term untouchable. So, there are certain terms that people prefer themselves, like Dalit. So, constitutional term, a legal term like scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. So, again, search speaking, we are supposed to avoid reducing anybody to an abbreviation. So, in written communication, you can say, put it like this in brackets and then you can use SCST. In spoken, 
we are not supposed to say SCST though we do, do that all the time because reducing anybody to an acronym abbreviation is considered to be disrespectful you have to use the full form. So, this particular came into usage in the 70s in Uttar Pradesh and in Hindi Bhimar also means to be sick. So, in IITs the number one state which sends students is from Bihar. If you look at IAS, very significant number comes from Bihar. So, you know, so these are things which have to be avoided because they ping a particular state or a set of states. Okay, and you can see it is actually used in certain kinds of academic research as well. In fact, the government itself has come up with a new term for these four states which is called as EAG, Empower Action group states okay, because there are special provisions to get rid of economic problems in these states. So, these things or a term like paraya refer to untouchables in India. This article has nothing to do with caste, it is about finance, but using such terms may cause insult to some people who are from those backgrounds. So, better to avoid those terms and use more technical terms, bringing in these words Again, World Development is a very, uh, you know, it's a top journal where this kind of thing appears. Another thing, from avoiding insensitive words, we should also avoid generalization, vagueness. So, there are hundreds and hundreds of articles in economics on this Asian crisis, which happened in the 1990s. A lot of Indian economists and politicians and bureaucrats feel very offended by it because that Asian crisis did not affect India because we followed some correct economic policies unlike Thailand and China and all the Southeast Asian countries. So, instead of giving credit to us, all Asians are being clubbed together by using the term Asian crisis even though Indian economists were aware of what kind of problems can emerge and went about the reform process slowly. Okay? So, it is an example of vagueness of ambiguity. So, Precision is something we require in scientific communication and these are examples of imprecise usage of places and regions. Age is an uh, area where we need to be sensitive. So, with more medicines, uh, increase in standard of living, better access to food and so on, more people are living longer lives now. So, our people who are older also live very active lives. The people are so sensitive. We informal usage where we are also insensitive. Sometimes, sometimes we say no, that is all we say. Other, other end also. But younger people may be mature, older people may be wise. So, informal usage, we use some of these insensitive references to older and younger people, we should ensure they do not come into our official communication. So, these are words which are to be completely avoided, disrespectful. Like in the case of tribal people, just adding a definite article the before referring to older people gives them respect. Or putting the word person or people after referring to their age gives them respect. Okay? So, make sure that do not come. I will give you a couple of examples. You can see here in this example among elderly people that is giving respect. This is about uh, risk of falling people. This is about hip fractures in the elderly. Again, it is the this is our atrial fibrillation major contribution to stroke. This is a medical journal in the elderly. So, while referring to older people. So, the world is becoming more diverse with now, sure we are sensitive to age issues. Finally, we come to disability. So, disability is a big issue. A lot of people with physical disabilities who are there in the world, who are there in our workplaces. How do you refer to people with disability? Fundamental rule here is to emphasize the person rather than the disability. So, this is an example. This person is on a wheelchair, but this person is disabled not because of the disability, but because of the staircase. There was a ramp here 
this person's disability would be less. So disability is not only a function of our physical disability, it is also a function of the external environment. And these days technology is so advanced, they can make a lot of us with disability live more uh, full lives. So just look at somebody like Stephen Hawking, the physicist who does so many things in spite of being. So we should not use words like physically handicapped or physically disabled. Yeah, so differently able is used, but we avoid them because ridicule them. Okay, they make fun of it. What is different about you? Why are you so special? So differently able can be used, but again our idea here is to be is to stick to the facts. Be precise, be clear, refer to the actual situation. So we are referring to a person with disability. Different can be different grades of difference, difference in what way, in what context, we do not want to go into all that. Person with a disability is simple. So PWD, PWD is person, that is why now in most government communication, they have changed PD to PWD. Physically disabled is not used, person with disability is used now. In IIT forms also you will see that. These are examples from some academic publications. So you can see this one, this is the wrong one because after the disability. Here also people is coming after, whereas here people is coming before disability. This is the correct way, these two are the wrong ones. This is from an engineering science and education journal. So robotics and its role in helping disabled people, that is the old usage, not acceptable now. This is not acceptable, this is acceptable. Children, autism is a mental illness. So you are saying children with autism instead of saying autistic children. Yeah? Yeah. So in general, like you do, we would like you in your education oral and written to also have some kind of a checklist and ensure that you meet all these gender and diversity criteria in your communication also. Okay? Let us just do a few self assessments. Yeah. So aborigines, which is native, negro, geriatric, serious, disabled is person with disability. Okay. Okay. A friend tells you, what do you do? Any of you would do the first one. Hopefully nobody. <laughs> Second one? No, absolutely nobody. Isn't it? How many of you do this? Most of us, isn't it? Yeah? Somebody tells us a racist or sexist joke. Some of us we may laugh in private, but most of us do nothing. C is what most of us do. What we should be doing is D. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which one of these is unacceptable? First one is acceptable. Second one. So these these two sentences. Why are they unacceptable? Because of A or B. A. Not B. Both, isn't it? They are both. So these are three titles of articles that I have given here. High and low technology approaches in the development of communication systems, machines as the measure of men, mortality and morbidity results from this one. So the first one, is it correct or inappropriate? Second one, third one, appropriate. So you can design these kinds of quizzes with your own examples. Just go to Google and you can search for articles and then you can ask the students to give, explain why it is correct or wrong and then give the correct version. Okay, that, that's the way they learn how to give, uh, how to incorporate these gender and diversity issues in their communication. These are the kind of assignments that you can think of. Why is this acceptable? So as we have seen in our own discussions, some of us we all have different opinions on this. Okay? So why do they consider it important in research communication or how can we better address these things? 
in these STEM subjects. So ask people themselves to reflect on these issues. So instead of us telling how to do this, asking people themselves to think about more aware of the importance of these kind of issues.